I recently saw this Lego drawer box. The collection looks great on the site, but there are a few problems. The first one being the price point. This is a lot. I looked for some more details and stumbled into the reviews. For me, the worst one was about the quality. We shouldn't see issues like this on an item that costs this much. So I'm going to show you how I made my own new and improved version of this. And yes, it includes storage for all of your most important things. I'm going to show you how I made it, and in case you don't have many tools, I'll be sure to explain how to make a simplified version too. The first step is to sand the pieces you're working with. It's easier to sand these now while everything is out and open so that you don't mess up your piece later. I sanded these using 220 grit sandpaper. You're normally supposed to work up from 120 to 180 and then 220, but the boards I bought at Home Depot came pre-surfaced. They're smooth and perfectly square so they're ready to work with. I love the way walnut looks and that's why I chose it for this project. Let me know in the comments what you would have chosen. Now let's get into the good stuff and check out the dimensions. Feel free to make adjustments as needed, but those were the sizes that I used for mine. I took my board to the miter saw and I started working on my square cuts. The two pieces here are specifically squares because they are gonna be the top and the bottom. And naturally, the next big step was to pull out the table saw and work on the side pieces. The side pieces of this Lego are going to be about 3.75 inches tall, so I'm just ripping the long boards to that size. And here's one of the biggest changes to Lego's design. Setting the table saw to 45 degrees and cutting a bevel into each piece is going to change the way that these pieces come together. I cut this 45 degree bevel into every single piece, sides, top, and bottom. Cutting the long sides can be a little bit awkward on the table saw, so I finished these up on the miter saw using the top as a reference. And now we're really going to start to see how this comes together. This might sound a little crazy to the beginners out there, but wood glue is all you need, no screws here. Wood glue is stronger than you would imagine. I had to put wood glue on every edge except the one for the drawer face. A wood glue brush definitely helps get an even coat on there. Once the glue is in place, line up the corners and hold them together with painter's tape. I went with a 45 degree cut on every corner, and this is because it's a more seamless transition. Keep in mind, we're trying to improve LEGO's design here. And without the tools, I did mention that there would be an alternative. And that's what you call a butt joint. It's when you join two pieces without cutting either part. You can use wood glue and tape the exact same way, it just won't look as clean. In this example, you can see the wood's end grain. And with the piece that I built, there is no end grain on the outside. After that was all done, I moved on to making the four circles that would sit on top of the Lego. It probably looks like I'm being really productive here, but these were pretty much all failed attempts. Don't get me wrong, some of them look super cool, but it just turns out that making a perfect circle can be pretty difficult. Okay, my initial attempts were also not that bad. That wasn't the final stage to this. From that rough shape that you just saw, I was gonna screw the piece into place and carve out the perfect shape using a wood router. I'll show you a much easier way in a second, but I just wanted to show this because it was pretty fun. If you're enjoying the process, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel. This method isn't terrible because it did work, but I have a better method that I want to show you. You essentially secure your working piece to a wooden board and keep passing it through the table saw until you get a circle. These clips are from a YouTube short that I recently uploaded, and I'll leave that full video in the description. This method is not only more safe, but also more accurate as well. And again, if you don't have some of these tools, you can always buy these pieces online. They're pretty cheap, and they'll save you a headache. Now back to our main piece. The corners looked great, and this is after a day or so of letting the wood glue dry. And as you can see, 
using those 45 degree angles really paid off. It looks seamless. I sanded the piece delicately one more time with 220 grit sandpaper. This was mostly to get rid of the wood glue residue, but I had to be very careful with the corners. After that final sanding, I started laying out my wooden circles, and this piece really started to look like a Lego. After that exciting preview, I basically drew a tic-tac-toe grid on top of the box, and this was done to evenly space my circles. And mathematically, you just divide the box into thirds and then draw that corresponding line. And using this guide, it was pretty easy to position the circles up top. And once these were in place, all it took was a little bit of wood glue to secure them there. To make sure that these are sitting perfectly flat, you can put a little bit of weight on top of them to hold them in place while the glue dries. If you have some weights that you never use around the house, this is their time to shine. Now it's time to move on to the drawer. The dimensions were shy of 4x4, so we're going to make it a little smaller than that. For this drawer box, I used some maple that was about half an inch thick. This is essentially a little square, so it's okay for the pieces to have identical sizes. I set the blade on my table saw to about half the thickness of this material. Then I gave all of these boards a pass to create a space for the drawer bottom, and you'll see that in a second. This is basically just going to be a small box held together by screws. It's also a good idea to pre-drill the hole for the screws, and this is because it helps prevent the wood from breaking when you're drilling in your actual screw. Remember that space for the drawer bottom? This is how that works. I measured this out and then cut that piece to size. To give this board a nice touch, I also used an adhesive felt liner. This was a simple peel and stick, so the application was pretty easy. Make sure the liner is oversized and then you can just cut off any excess material afterward. There's always something so satisfying about sliding in the drawer bottoms. After I made sure everything fit, I drilled the screws into that opposite side. I then used some double-sided tape on that drawer box to help me align it with the drawer face. Since the fit was right on, I secured the box to the drawer face using some wood glue and screws. Then it was time to make the drawer pull hole. I wanted this to be centered horizontally, but also a little closer to the top of the drawer. I used a four center drill bit to make this hole, and I really took my time so I wouldn't damage the piece. To smoothen out the Lego a little bit, I also went back to the circles up top with my wood router and used a roundover bit. After that, it was time for some finishing touches. To wrap up the piece, I used Walrus Oil's Furniture Finish. This is a natural wood oil with a very easy application. You simply apply it to the wood and wipe it off clean. In seconds, your piece becomes vibrant and the wood comes to life. There's always a sense of relief when you get to this part. And that's because you know that you're just about done with this project.